Okay, it's another lesson on the mass media. And now we're going to look at mass media ownership and control. Who controls the mass media? Particular newspapers and televisions. Who owns it? Once they, con once they own it, how do they control it? On the books, we're on page 126, 127. We're going to find out who owns and controls what in the British media. We're going to understand why this might be a problem. <coughs> If it, are, are, is anybody misusing their ownership, i.e. using it to get undue influence? We develop our critical thinking skills. Keyword, newspapers, journalism, publicly owned, bias, taxation, companies, pluralism, monopoly, dissent, brainwash, advertising, influence, neoliberal and regulations. A lot of important keywords here. Journalism, reporters. Publicly owned, it means we, the people, own it. The government runs it normally. So schools are publicly owned. This school, for example. Taxation, what that is. Pluralism, if more than one person or group supplies a service, for example, that is pluralism. Plural, more than one. Monopoly means one. If, if there was one TV station, it would have the monopoly. Instead, we have hundreds of TV stations, so that might mean we have pluralism. Yeah. Dissent. If you don't agree with something, you dissent from it. I don't agree with that. I'm dissenting. Brainwashing. That means advertising, influence, neoliberal and regulations. We've mentioned this before. If you are a neoliberal, you think government is bad. Taxation is bad. People who run businesses should be free from government regulations. They should be able to do whatever they want to do, pay less tax, smaller government, government not get involved. This is, a, this is what's called a neoliberal point of view. OK, so, let's crack it. So who owns what in the media in Britain? Firstly, Britain's in a very unusual situation. We have the BBC. BBC is publicly owned. It's not a company. It doesn't run for profit. It's run by us. It's not run directly by the government. It's set up by the government. Yeah. It's paid for from a tax. The licence fee, the TV licence, is a tax. You pay the tax to this company and they produce lots of media. The iPlayer, BBC One, BBC Two, Three, Four, blah, blah, blah. Yeah? BBC Bite Size. Yeah? BBC, it's an odd one. British Broadcasting Corporation, yeah. but a lot of the rest of the media is owned by individual companies. And the most important one in Britain is News International, or sometimes called News Corp. Now, News International owns Sky, Sky News, The Sun, The Sunday Times. Until recently, they owned the News of the World, but they had to close that down. News International. Owns all this in America. It's a huge worldwide media company. Yeah. You watch Sky, that's News International. You read The Sun, News International. And there's a few other companies, the Daily Mail, the Mirror Group, own big chunks of it as well. So there's a few large companies. There's the BBC, News International, the Mail Group, a couple of others who own nearly all the media. News International is owned and controlled by this man, Rupert Murdoch. So he owns Sky, <coughs> The Sun, Sunday Times, etc., etc. Right? And the argument for this being OK is pluralism. If more than one person owns the media... They can all put their own different points of views. If we, had, if we just had the BBC, it would be a monopoly. Whatever they told us, we'd end up having to believe. We wouldn't have any other access to any other information. But with pluralism, with lots of different companies owning, most importantly, the news, with lots of different newspapers competing, lots of different TV news programmes... It's called pluralism. It means if one newspaper is lying, 
other newspapers will call them liars, and we'll get to know about it. Pluralism. These companies who own things like uh, newspapers, the thing that influences the most is advertisers. So all of these products here, and lots of others, are all owned by Procter & Gamble. They run adverts on TV stations and in newspapers. If those TV stations and newspapers start doing things that they don't like, they'll stop advertising and they will lose money. So that affects what goes on inside this guy's head. He knows if I do certain things, they will stop advertising. They will stop giving me millions and millions of pounds a year to run their adverts. So I won't do things to upset them. So advertisers have a big effect on this. Moving on. What do Marxists think of all this? Marxists think this idea of pluralism is, an abs is absolute rubbish. It's a sham. It's a fake. They say, look, it doesn't matter that there's 15 different companies all running the media. They've all got one thing in common. They're all upper middle class. They're all members of the elite. Each child, Murdoch, the guys who run the newspapers, the editors, the people in the BBC... They've all got one thing in common. They're all members of the upper middle class. And they all do things to protect their interest. So yeah, it's different companies, but they're all the same sort of person. In particular, they point out to lots of the newspapers, people like Murdoch, are what we call neoliberals. They believe the government shouldn't get involved in things, the government shouldn't make them pay people a particular wage, you know, the minimum wage. And they use their newspapers to try and push this agenda. They can't use their TV stations. They're not allowed to, by law. You're not allowed to put opinion on the TV news. But you are allowed to put any opinion you want in a newspaper. If this guy owns a newspaper, that newspaper says the things he wants them to say. And that's the Marxist view of the media. But what does stop Murdoch doing whatever he likes? Well... And these TV stations, there's rules in England, in Britain, about impartiality. Like I just said, these TV stations are not allowed to take sides by law. They have to report the news without any opinion. However, his newspapers can give opinions, but what can stop them are the laws against libel. If he tells a lie about somebody, they can take him to court and sue him. So he can't just do whatever he wants. There are things that constrain him. And in class, we'll do this essay. Got to say how far I would agree that political views presented by the mass media are those of the rich and powerful society. Yeah, we have to think about that, put it together. Marx would agree. Marxists would say this. However, pluralism. We'll put this together in more detail in class. <laughs>